Hello, thank you so much for joining me today for Give Him 15. The title of today's post is What is Causing So Much Disease and Death? Some subjects are too broad in scope to address in a short article or teaching. The overall topic of human suffering, sickness, disease, hunger, death, etc., is certainly one of them. Attempting to give brief explanations of complex subjects often creates confusion and misunderstanding. I will not do that here. Also, I want to state from the beginning that there are aspects of what I'm addressing today which I don't fully understand. I still believe, however, that I should address it. I have never before seen the amount of sickness, disease, and death that I've witnessed in this season. Obviously, there have been times in history where plagues and pandemics caused more death than uh, we humans are currently experiencing. But I have never personally observed the level I have been seeing. And I'm not referring only to COVID. Numerous other forms of sickness and disease seem to be running rampant. Never have I had as many individuals within my personal circle of acquaintances stricken with disease and death. Many of them are or were in ministry. Two more died this past week. Thankfully, some who have been extremely ill have survived. Overall, however, the onslaught has been horrific. If death or suffering has touched your circle as well as mine, I'm deeply sorry for your pain and loss. I have thought and prayed about this for several days. It seems to me that something has been supernaturally unleashed on the earth, spiritual in nature, that is producing this unprecedented level of death and disease. Let me be clear in saying I do not believe all sickness is directly caused by demonic activity. Nor do I believe that all sickness is caused by sin in a person's life. I do believe, in a general sense, that all sickness originates from the curse of sin and resulting satanic activity. In that regard, Satan is the source of all sickness and disease, even if caused by poor health habits, unforgiveness, and other sins. Jesus clearly demonstrated God's attitude toward sickness. He healed all who came to him for healing and treated sickness as an enemy. Acts 10, 38 says of Christ's ministry, You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. Now he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. While I do not believe all sickness is directly caused by demonic spirits, it is clear from Scripture that some is. Jesus healed a person who was bent over with a crooked spine, caused by a spirit of infirmity. He healed a boy, <clears throat> excuse me, he healed a boy who was deaf and couldn't speak which was caused by a spirit. And there are other biblical examples we could mention. I don't know how demons cause diseases such as these, nor do I know all that gives them access or permission to do so. Clearly, certain actions open the door to demonic activity. In other cases, however, it does not appear that the person suffering from evil spirits committed any act that would open the door to it. 
One possible explanation is a person's genetics, which can make them vulnerable. Medi the medical world knows that many diseases are caused by inherited susceptibility to them. It seems logical that demons somehow prey on this. Just how they are able to do this, I do not pretend to understand. When Jesus healed individuals of diseases caused by spirits, he didn't explain how it occurred. He simply delivered and healed them. I do not pretend to know how spiritual forces can at times release more sickness into the earth. But biblically, I know it's possible. And I feel that that is occurring. The scriptures teach that at times Satan becomes more wrathful and aggressive in his activities. Revelation 12.12 12 makes this clear. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The verse in no way suggests this as the only time such activity will occur in history. And I am not suggesting that it's happening at this time because Jesus is about to return. I don't pretend to know when that will occur. No one does. I'm simply pointing out that Satan's wrath and activities fluctuate. Regarding this verse in Revelation, my spiritual dad, Jim Hodges, says, Escalated satanic activity does not take place only before Christ's final return, but has occurred periodically in history. Satan is not omniscient, but he can observe when the ecclesia, the church, is maturing at certain junctures in history, and thus his rage goes to another level. Revelation is a book that addresses history past and present, as well as the future. I agree with Brother Hodges. The murdering of babies during the time when Moses was born, the, sur the season surrounding Christ's birth when Herod had children killed, the martyrdom of many believers when the church was born, these would all be examples. The Holocaust is a contemporary example. Obviously, throughout history, there have been seasons when violent, destructive activity from Satan increased on the earth. I feel we are currently in one of those times. The maturity of the ecclesia and the imminent, unprecedented worldwide harvest has infuriated Satan. In order to stop these things, I believe he has launched a counterattack, a campaign to bring death and destruction. At his command, spirits that cause infirmity have been unleashed. We can stop some of this. Certainly, we cannot stop all death and destruction. But I do believe we can bind the demonic activity causing some of the current sickness and death, especially that which is being leveled against the body of Christ. I am not suggesting we should be compassionate toward and pray only for believers. We want all suffering to end. But when an individuals are under the blood of Jesus and in covenant with him, it becomes easier to stop Satan's attacks. He has no authority over them. Healing is the children's bread. So let's pray against this onslaught. We're going to stop some of it right now. We're going to come into agreement all across this land. 
and we're going to stop some of this. Father, we come to you now in the powerful name of Jesus. We state our faith in his sacrifice and redeeming work. He delivered us from the authority of darkness and translated us into his kingdom. He also gave us his authority to stop the works of Satan against us. As a prayer army here in America and in other nations as well, we join our hearts and faith together. We're doing what the Bible says is agreeing in prayer. We do so now to oppose the onslaught of sickness and death which demonic spirits are releasing in the earth. We bind this. We declare our faith that the blood of Jesus covers and shields us from these attacks. We bind spirits causing COVID, cancer, other diseases, and death. We declare Psalm 91, 1 Peter 2.24, and Romans 8.37 over our brothers and sisters, and especially right now over leaders in the body of Christ. We declare in the powerful name of Jesus that this assault against leaders in the church will now be pushed back and rendered powerless. We break its effectiveness. And Father, we certainly love those who do not know you. We pray for them as well. We ask for their protection from these evil diseases. Please heal them. Turn back this horrible tide of destruction. And we pray for their salvation. Reveal Jesus to them. And we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. And our decree today is, we decree that the spirit of death and disease that's attacking people in this season is being overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the authority of Christ. Amen. We stand on this. It'd be good if you'd pray this on your own for a few days. I'll probably be returned to it in these posts. We're going to break the back of this attack in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me. And I'll see you tomorrow.